Hello. Welcome to Yard Lane. Different presenter now. I'm trying to disguise myself. Oh, this is so... I can't tell you how lovely this is. And anyway, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Tell you about it. Right, welcome to Yarn Lane. Yarn, Le Yarn Lane is the sister channel... I'll move that off from my microphone. Yarn Lane is the sister channel to Sewing Street. Uh, but we concentrate on everything uh, crochet and knitting. Today we are doing crochet. But I just want you to have a look. The, the code that we used earlier on Sewing Street, if you just joined us... Um, it's my three month probation up to now. We wanted you to get something from it. So we have a code. Now, don't worry, spending money doesn't, doesn't save me. I'm already saved. I'm already saved. All I want is for you to save money. So if you spend £40 or more on either Sewing Street and or Yarn Lane, doesn't matter, it all joins together, you can get £10 off by put, using the code when you check out there. So spend £40. So you might already have like £25, £35 in your basket, not checked out. Buy something this hour, take it over the £40, put the code in, you'll get £10 off. Remember, you only pay one p and If you've already bought from Sewing Street this morning and you've done your p and then you don't pay another p and because it comes out of the same warehouse. It will all be in the same uh, 3 95 post and packaging. Um, and I don't think I need to tell you anything else. Uh, oh, now, if you need to buy anything from this hour, it's not on the Sewing Street website, it's on the Yarn Lane website. So... You, so you, do you want to see it? Do you want to see it? It's exactly the same, exact thing, but it's, it's the Yarn Lane one. There it is. So there's pocket scarf and hat. Watch live. Uh, again, you can send me... Um, oh, where's the message square? I can't see it. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, but look, all of everything that you're going to see in this hour is all on pre-order. Oh, now your one. You haven't even seen Sam yet. The one Sam's wearing, is it called Mustard? Harvest is flying out. Harvest is absolutely flying out. Now, let me explain to you what it is, just so you know what it is. Right, the big bags on the front of the desk here, they're all scarves, right? The little bags at the front, they're all hats. We don't do a combo. So if you wanted, you could have this coloured scarf with the, the Harvest hat or the Harvest scarf with the blue. So I'm going to go through all of that in a minute. But they are. So we're going to do a, a, a scarf demo to start with. And then we're going to do a hat demo. But it's up to you. You can either have, they match. If you want them to match, they match. If you want to do coordinating, you do coordinating. Very good for beginners, I'm being told. Oh, hang on. Hannah's just saying. You buy a hat and a scarf? Oh, if you buy the hat and the scarf, don't check out, right? Don't check out straight away. If you buy a hat and a scarf, it takes you over the £40, which means you'll get your £10 off. We take that, not you, don't worry. She's, she's looking at me going, what? What? No, that's a special deal just for today, till midnight tonight. Right, shall we get started? Oh, right, before I introduce Sam, if you have not met Sam yet, let me go through the four different colourways. So I'll do the scarves first, then I'll do the hats, right? Okay, they've got little coloured pictures on the front. So I'll start here. So this one here is Bordeaux, which is this one. It's gorgeous colour. It's kind of like, oh, it's got a bit of polystyrene in there. Um, oh, anyway, look, so what you get in the, in the bag, so you get the bag, first of all, you get your yarn, which is, uh, a, a, oh, it's got alpaca in it. It's got alpaca, 10% alpaca. You get your instructions. There's the instructions. You get five balls of wool, or the King Cole type yarn, we have to call it, and you will need a six millimetre or a five millimetre hook. Oh, there's a label in there as well. There it is. Right, now the label is leather. I need to tell you that because some people love the fact or some people don't like the fact it's leather. It is a leather label. You don't have to use it. It's in its little bag if you want to. But it just says handmade on. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So all of that, £34.99. Uh, one thing I need to point out to you as well. Let me put that back in there so we don't get confused. The scarf, I mean, it's huge. It's got pockets on it, look. Look, 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 let's go pocket in the end there. On both sides. Both sides. And there's the little label on that one. So that's the Bordeaux scarf. Then the next one along. Oh, this is a gorgeous. These colours are gorgeous. I'm only going to show you the colour because it's the same in each one. You don't get a hook. You just get the instructions, the little label and the yarn, which has got 10% alpaca in it. Put it the right way. This one is called Harvest. When you see Sam in a minute, this is the one she's wearing. And so far, the most popular. So far, the most popular. Righty-ho. Then we're moving on to... It's a pale blue, this one. Oh, God. These colours. 
I don't know which one I choose actually. This is a beautiful colour, this one. Oh, Paul still likes the Bordeaux the best. This is gorgeous. This one's called Misty Blue. Oh, that's quite good because we do a fabric that's called Misty Blue. It's green, isn't it? So at least this one really is Misty Blue. Gorgeous. That, oh, there you go. That's Sam's uh, office, her, her library at home. Right, okay. And then what's the last colour then? Oh, this is, oh, that, that's nice. What are we calling this one? Parchment. Oh, <laughs> gone a bit trendy on this one. Parchment. So that's the scarf parchment there. You'll see all of these made up. Sam's got them on the table over there in a minute. I just want to get you all, I want to get all of the details out of the way so we can spend the rest of the time just crocheting. There's that one. Same shelf, different scarf. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So that's the, they're the, they're the scarves, right? Then the hats come in these cute little bags here. Again, they do get a leather tag. Ooh, someone, there we go. Pulling that one with anything. So in this one, you get one ball of the yarn, the instructions, and the little tag, and it's called a cosy hat. And that's how you look if you make that one. That's me in my school bag, my PE kit look over my bag. Oh, do I look too tired? Oh, look at the bags under my eyes. Oh, dear. Anyway, so then we have, I'll just do these one at a time. We then have the harvest bag. I love the fact that it comes all in a little, you know, like, it could so easily have just put it in a plastic bag, couldn't we? Twelve ninety nine. Now remember, if you buy the scarf and a hat, it takes you over the forty pounds. Actually, so how much was the scarf? Oh, she's thirty four ninety nine, forty four ninety nine, forty five ninety nine, forty six ninety nine, forty seven. So it comes to forty seven ninety eight. You'll get the two for thirty seven ninety eight if you use the code. Okay. Then we've got the this one, misty blue. I don't need to open it. You've seen the colour, misty blue. I just love all of this, all the detail. It's just, if you're buying it as a gift for somebody as well, it's already all wrapped and done for you, isn't it? That, that's the misty blue one. And that's how the misty blue, oh, that looks a bit bluer on that photo yeah. than it is in real life. It's a gorgeous, that lovely, lovely soft wedgewood, I'd call that. And then last, not, not least, I'd call oatmeal. She's called parchment. <laughs> Okay, and then I've got a six, I've got a couple of items here. I've got a six millimetre hook. Oh, okay, okay, we'll do those later. Six millimetre hook there. It's quite not, now that's a nice colour as well, isn't it? The cap can be done with a five mil as well, but you can go on the website for the five mil. I'm just going to show you six mil. I'm absolutely boiling. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How Hello. are you, Auntie Fred? Very well, thank Christmas. you. Yes, thank you. Did you? Uh, yeah. Well, I was here. Oh, of course we all, you were. Christmas were here, Day. And I went home and had Meg and chips afterwards. Oh, lovely. Um, anyway, anyway, so you're wearing... I'm wearing the Harvest. Harvest. I've this got the Bordeaux. The yeah. And then you've got on the table in front of you, you've got the made-up Misty Blue yeah, and the Misty Parchment. Yeah, Misty Blue and that's the Parchment. Yeah. So you've got the matching hat as well. But you see, like, I like the way they haven't put them in together because that those two colours look gorgeous together. So yeah. you could almost make the hat to go that's with a different scarf if yeah, you wanted to. Yeah, it's a good idea. To, and I you don't like matching. Oh, that's nice. and blue together yeah, is that's really lovely gorgeous. as well. Yeah. I can't throw you mine over because I'm not allowed to touch the same thing. But, <laughs> but this one would look nice with the parchment as yes. well, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, really nice. So that's yeah, really so lovely that you can... And also, some people, like, in real life, I'd wear this. Yeah. But I wouldn't obviously wear this. <laughs> I don't wear hats. So, so, but little Paul wears hats every day, sort of thing. Don't, it, some people don't So if you just hat. want one or the other, yes, you've exactly. got choice So I just too. have this yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we've only got an hour. Okay. And you're going to show us so much, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. So we're starting with... The scarf. scarf exactly. And will, we, will I use all five balls of yarn? You're nearly all. So right. I've put five in, so you've got plenty. Yeah. So you can adjust the length of your scarf to fit yourself. Oh, of course, yes. So, yeah, so you want it to go to a length where you can put your hands comfortably in the pockets. Yeah. So you can wear it inside or outside. You can wrap it around your neck if you want to, if you're outside. It's nice. But it also makes a bit, makes it's like a It's quite nice, isn't it, over it? a dress yes, with yes, a belt. Yeah. So it looks almost like a waistcoat. Well, if you're in, if you're in a chill, if your workroom's not particularly exactly. warm, and you just want something. It's just like something, an extra layer. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. But if you want to wear it outside, obviously you can wrap it around your neck like you had yeah. it, or you can put it over a coat like this. So it's very versatile. Fantastic. OK, where, where okay. do we start? What do we do? So I'm going to start right at the beginning because it's quite an easy make. So if you're new to crochet, this is a quite a good one to start with. 
So I'm going to go back over how to hold the hook and yarn. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yes, we, we have new customers every single exactly. day with yarn lane. And so they might not have seen you before, not to understand. Yeah, and if this is, um, if crochet is something you've been wanting to try, great time of year to take it up. Brilliant for the evenings. Yes, exactly. When it's dark and cold. Oh, so. shush. <laughs> right, so you're going to start by making a slip knot. Yep. So to do that, you're going to put the tail in the palm of your hand. Right, hang on, hang on. Oh yeah, we're there, we're there, we're there. Good, 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 good. And good. then you're going to wrap the other end over it to make a loop. Yeah. So the important thing is that this end, I call this a tail end, the end yep. is underneath the other. And then you're just going to put your hook through, grab this end, oh, oops, and pull it back through. We've got butter fingers today. Mm. You do it with your hook or your fingers. Right, and this is the and slip. And this is the slip knot. Slip knot. So then you pull the ball end and it tightens it up. Right. So the important thing with crochet is you want this loop on your hook to be loose. Okay, first of all, why do we need a slip? Why do we need because a slip knot? Because you want to be able to make the loop bigger or smaller. You can right. change your tension. Oh, I was saying if you just knotted it. If it's just a knot, it wouldn't you move can't move like it. that. Yeah. So okay, it needs to be able to slip. Okay. So if you've got your own way of doing a slip knot, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, and but then what we're saying about the loop has to be loose. It needs to be loose. So people who can knit who struggle with crochet, more often than they're not, they're pulling it too tight. Okay. And so with knitting, you need things to be a bit tighter, but with crochet, you want a looseness to it. So make sure when you've got this loop on your hook, that there's a little bit of a gap underneath the hook. Right. And then I'm just going to briefly remind you how to get into position in case there's anyone that would like to have a go at this that's new to crochet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm right-handed, so I'm, I hold my hook in the uh, knife hold with my hand on top of the hook. You can also hold it in the pencil hold with your hand underneath. Right. Whichever is most comfortable to you, it doesn't okay. matter at all. So knife hold. Just grab that tail up with your hook, just to keep it out of the way. And bring this end that's attached to the ball of the arm, as you yeah. can see there. Keep your two hands close together and bring it over your other hand. So for me, it's my left hand. Over the little finger and under. Drape it over the next. If you can possibly pull those in, it will tighten it. And this piece of yarn here is going to become your working yarn. Right. So the minute you pull those two fingers in towards the palm of your hand, you feel that tighten up, which is what you want a little bit of tension here. And then at the moment, my, my thumb is pointing upwards. You then twist so that your wrist turn so your thumb is now pointing downwards and push back on this piece of yarn with either your middle finger or your first finger. Again, it's whatever feels most comfortable to you. Uh -huh. I use my middle finger. Either is fine. And then drop the tail and hold that between your thumb and your other finger. So if you're holding it with like this, you'll use your middle finger, but right. I'm holding my first. Now, in the process of doing that, Everything might have tightened up and you might have a tighter loop here. So this is where it's good that you've got your slip knot right. because you can loosen it a bit. So you need that to be loose. Yeah. And can, it be too, can it be too loose? It can be, but too loose is better than too tight. Okay, so when right. if you're brand new to it, don't worry about the looseness. Right. Okay. Also, we're putting an edging on this scarf. So if it's loose, we can cover that up. Okay. If it's too tight, you will just battle with it and okay. it will be a real struggle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got yourself in what I call my starting position. Yeah. And then you're going to put your hook to the left of the yarn and under it like so. And just do half a twist and pull it through that loop on your hook. So you've made one chain. Right. And this is your foundation chain. Right. And then you're going to do the same thing again. That's two, three, and just continue. Right. So if you're brand new to crochet, this is the thing to practice, your foundation chain. Oh, okay. Just sit and practice making chains even before you start the project. Yeah. And you'll get this sort of row of chains here. So it looks a bit like a plat. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah. and it's like they, li they call them V's. You often hear V's referred to in crochet. Okay. And if you look at it, each chain looks like a V kind of interlocking yes, into yes, the yes, one yes. below. Yeah. Um, so that's how you get started. If you're brand new, sit and practice that a bit before you go yes. any further. I think it's the beginning bit that I'd have to practice. The, the, the just <laughs> yeah, the twisty, twisty turning. I mean, people hold the yarn and the hook in lots of different ways, and any way is fine. Yeah. So just see my way as a guide, as a starting point. Don't feel you have to but stick with it. But I think it'd be it, like when you start driving, you kind of go, you've yeah. got to do this, <laughs> do this, two. do this, move <laughs> this foot, this foot. Exactly. Once you start driving, you learn what's comfortable for yeah. you and, and it's and you would you'll, that will become second nature it'll at become the moment muscle memory it, yeah, yeah it looks like oh gosh where's yeah. that bit go again but once you get into the swing i think it'll that's actually it. feel more natural and that's the tricky bit and if you're struggling with it that's the bit to practice yeah. because, okay and it feels unnatural at first but once you get the hang of it like you say it's muscle memory okay, so perfect. so this is my chain i've started right. 
For the scarf, you need to make 37 of these little chains. Oh, okay. So you continue on until you've got 37 of them. Right. So I've done one. I'm going to just Oh, you don't want to say, <laughs> here we go, 37. <laughs> just to save me sort of trying so to count them more than anything. Scarf, where is that bit? On, that on bit, the you can't quite see it, but it's along the bottom. Oh, it's the start. It's like, Before, yes. Yeah, so you, it's a rectangle, basically. So I've added an edging here. Right. But it runs along the bottom. In fact, the bottom is the other end. It runs along the bottom here. Right. And so we're going to build it upwards, get working back and forth in rows to make a long rectangle. Okay. Okay. So I've got my 37 here. I did it so that I didn't have to worry about counting in front of you all. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's just what really not done. counting, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is your starting point. A lot of projects start with a foundation chain. Right. We'll, I'll show you when I do the hat. The other way is to start with a magic ring. But okay. this is a beginning for lots of them. Yeah. You're going to find the fifth chain from the hook. So the first, the loop on your hook doesn't ever count as a chain. So ignore that one. That's just waiting to make a stitch. Right. And then you've got this first one here which has got the yarn coming out of it. That's number one, yeah. two, three, four. Find the fifth chain along. Can you see that okay? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to work under the top loop of it. There's lots of ways of working the foundation chain, but just to make it clear, and as I said, I'm adding an edging, so it doesn't matter um, how neat it is at this stage. I'm just going under that top loop. So keep my eye on that. And I'm going to make trebles. So I'm going to do yarn over, go under that chain, Grab the yarn and pull it back through that chain, which gives me three loops on your hook. Right. My hook. <laughs> now I've got. Is this where we have to point out that you use English yes. terminology, yes. not American? This terminology. is UK terminology. The UK, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. UK, yeah. So it called something different in America. They call it a double crochet. Okay. So. But how stupid that you call it treble, <laughs> they call it double. It's really frustrating. So, so if anybody is a crocheter. You're yeah. using UK terminology. I'm using UK terminology, okay. and this is a treble crochet. And okay. Yeah, so um, the most confusing thing is that American terminology it has the same names for stitches, but describes a different stitch. Oh. So, yeah, anyway, okay, don't worry few, about that today. Fewer than 20 of the misty blue left already, just so you know. <laughs> right. Okay, so I've got three loops on my hook, and this is where you need to keep those loops loose. So anybody who's new to it, you can see I've left a lot of space under there. Yeah. If it's tight, you'll struggle to get through. So then you grab the yarn with your hook and you put it through the first two and you grab it again and come through those last two. And that's one treble crochet made into that loop there, which is the fifth chain from the hook. We're going to make three of those. Okay. So we're going We've to got lots of fans watching. Oh, right there. Kathy says, great to see Sam on Yarn Lane again. Love her designs and her patterns are so easy to follow. Ruth says, good to see Sam again on Yarn Lane. She's an amazing teacher. Oh. Karen says, hi Sam, good to see you back on the TV. How lovely. Thank you, everyone. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I've done one treble. So I'm going to do two more trebles in that chain. So yarn over into that chain, pull the yarn back through, three loops on your hook again. So yarn over through two yarn over through two and then I'm going to do a third in exactly the same way. Now all so, this is written in the pattern. All this it? is written in the pattern, there's photographs, there's all sorts to help you in the pattern. Perfect. So I've done three trebles in the same chain there. This curly bit here, this is my chain three which was my bit that I skipped when I, sorry my chain four when I worked into my fifth chain. Right. And that's acting as a treble and a chain one space. That's right. why we skip four. Why did we? So why did we skip? Why did we skip four? Because we're going when as I come to make it, I want it to sit rectangularly. Yeah, Is that yeah, a word? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so um, I'm going to have chain threes and trebles up the sides, right, which you'll right. see as we go. Okay. Without that, it would wiggle up the sides. Okay. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Okay, yeah. so the next thing to do is you're going to skip two chains, so just be really careful because these three all sitting in one chain can overlap this one here. Yeah. So one, two, find the next one along and you make three trebles in there. So just work you under that one loop, three trebles in that same place. And this establishes your pattern, so you skip two chains and you make three trebles all the way along. So I've done those three trebles there, skip two again, one, two, make three trebles in the third. Right, yeah. So you keep doing that all the way along. I'll do one more just to show yep, you. Yep. So three trebles in there. One, Ignore two, her. three. So I've got these little groups of three trebles. Right. So one, two, oh, three yes, yes, so yes, far. Yes, I can can see you see? Yeah. And that's what makes the pattern in the scarf. Right. Um, and at the very end, when you've worked all the way along, you'll have 11 of those little groups. Right. So I have got another one I prepared. Okay, so has that pattern got a name? Has that got... 
it's like a granny stitch really when oh. you put three tre <laughs> three trebles right it's a bit like a granny stitch but we're going to work it a bit differently today oh, okay, okay. so but yes these, you often get these clusters of three and it just makes a really nice texture so when you're crocheting i've noticed right each piece that you get out of there hasn't got a hook you can take the hook out yeah you can i did have to redo this one just now but you can i mean th these stitch markers are really useful oh for that. okay so i've got so those. you can put those in yeah. if you um want to be absolutely sure well, no, no, because it means that if you're halfway through something say you get bored of making the scarf yeah and you, want to go and do it, you can take that hook out and go off and use it on something else exactly and come back to yeah it. exactly so you could just if you want i mean i just pull them out and leave a loop like that but you can for extra security put a stitch marker yeah, in which i've got here and pick that up again there they are there they are so what is it 199 get 30 so how, are you ever going to use 30 in a project sometimes oh you yeah, are sometimes if you're doing a really big um blanket for example and you've got a long starting chain you can use it to help you count out as you oh, go okay, they're okay. really useful okay. can't go wrong with stitch okay. marks they're so useful lovely okay so i've got my here's one i made earlier with my right. 11 little groups of three yeah and when you get to the end you have just two chains left so you skip one, and this is where we go back to making it a rectangle. Right. Skip one and just put one treble in the end there, like so. And that keeps it straight at the edges. So that one at the beginning that we skipped acts yeah. as a treble and a chain one. And this is also a chain one and then a treble. So that's the end of that row. Right. So then you chain three in the air. Which means, oh, just make three so new chains. So you just chains. literally just make three new like chains. Like you did at the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's pretending to be a treble. So one, two, three. And then if you're new to it, I really recommend, again, these stitch markers. Yeah. Just pop one. Yours won't be orange. Yours will be green and purple if you buy them from <laughs> me today. They come in all different colours. And also, um, the ones you've got are, are circular, I think, aren't they? They do exactly the same job. Oh, yours are circular, then? Are your, no, mine's like little safety pins. But those oh, okay. do exactly no, mine the same circular, job, those yeah. ones you've got. Yeah. So, OK, so do that. And that's really helpful for when you come back to this end of the row because you need to make your treble in there okay so then you turn it over and then to continue on you're going to find the second of your first group of three so here it is yeah. so one two three so that middle one there and you're going to go underneath the V so we're now working into stitches so here is your V with two strands of yarn right put your yarn over go under both those strands Pull the yarn back through, and again, you make your trebles. You've got three loops on your hook, so yarn over through two, yarn over through two. You see, I don't understand. My nan used to crochet, right? And she could be chatting, watching the table. <laughs> I'd be so busy looking at the pattern going, oh, yarn, treble, yarn over. I be, wouldn't be able to talk or look at anything else. You, honestly, you do get to the stage where you can just do it without without concentrating you can sit especially with a treble crochet like this you can sit in front of the telly yeah people that are more i mean if, if you're brand new to it you will need to concentrate yeah. but for people that are more experienced crochets this is a great project because you can just sit and do it in front of the telly yeah. and it works up so quickly so i've done those three while you were saying that in the yeah. middle one there and then i find the middle one of the next group of three one two three and i'm putting three trebles in there as well so you're going to work along just putting three trebles into the middle one of each group of three. Got a bit of a loose one there. If I was at home, I'd redo that one. It's gone a bit loose, but oh, that's fine. Oh, no, no slacking now. <laughs> I know. Um, Suzanne says, hi, Sam. Little did I realise how important the beginner's course I attended run by Sam would be to me. Crochet is such a wonderful therapy. Whilst I'm crocheting, I'm not mindlessly looking at my phone or snacking <gasps> or unnecessary <laughs> on unnecessary foods. I am creating something unique, usually a present for someone. I can't imagine not crocheting these days from Suzanne Langridge. Oh, how lovely. Isn't I'm so nice? pleased to hear that, Suzanne. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a brilliant hobby. It's so many uses. Well, so to many it. people. I yeah. can't believe since we started online, how many people actually do it. Yeah. It's incredible, it's, isn't it's, it? It's really popular. It's yeah. become more popular these days. Yeah. I think everybody's looking for something to take their worries away from well, everyday life. Well, that's what life. I say about sewing. It's yeah. mindful. It's all about exactly. mindfulness, isn't it? And this. It's almost like I used to make wigs years and years oh, and years yeah. ago for the for the theatre and everything. That would you know would be I would be miles away for yeah. you know for 
hours while well, and exactly. I was working, but it just because it's the same. You're knotting. It's you've got a barb yeah, thing, and you're exactly. knotting each hair and everything. And there's actually research that's been done that shows it slows down your breathing. When you're not brand new to it, and you're a bit, you know, when you're brand new, it's a bit stressful. Yeah, when yeah, you yeah. when you can do it. It slows down your breathing. It's a bit kind of meditative oh, because wow. you're, I suppose you know, it's rhythmic. Yeah. You're doing the same yeah. stitch again and again. But it's not, it's not, but you don't, th no. that's what normally go, oh, you've got to do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, boring. But actually it's not boring, it's is it? It's so yeah. satisfying. It's really rewarding yeah. because you're making something. And with this particular project, with this scarf, it builds up so quickly that you get immediate satisfaction yes. from it. Can I ask a quick question? As a beginner, I know you, you'd either buy the blue kit or the... But if you bought two kits, could you do it striped? Yes, definitely. So yes, I was saying earlier, a get a hat in one colour. I wouldn't yeah. buy the hat, but you know what I mean? I might like the scarf, but I might want it in the Bordeaux and the... and the. You could easily do that. Just change the colour whenever you want to at the end of a row. Yeah. Pull through your new colour as you finish your last stitch. And then you could do blocks of colour, yeah, yeah, you could do yeah, yeah, narrow yeah. stripes. So, so it it's possible to do Definitely. that. Definitely. Or if it's I've really got some yarn idea. at home yeah. and I just want the odd bit of green exactly. or the odd bit of yellow in Yeah, it. bring oh. a bit of sparkle into it, a bit of gold or something. <laughs> okay, so you continue... That's how along. I look, you see, though. <laughs> You continue along like that, yes. doing three trebles into the middle of each group, so right. into the second one of each group. And you end up with, well, you end up with your really long scarf. Now, I used three and a half balls to make my scarf. Right. And that got me to about 170 centimetres, which was just perfect for me to put my hands in my pocket. Oh, so you can make it longer than that? So you then. can go longer. You've got enough yarn to go longer if you want to. So I'm five for eight, but that seemed kind of perfect for me. Yeah. Just to be able to slap So what do you do with the other ball and a half of yarn then? So the other ball and a half of yarn, you're going to edge it and make the two pockets. Oh, of but course, of course, of course, of course. If you use the three and a half balls, you will have a bit left over. So if you do want to go longer, you've got scope to do that. But so. you might, like, I wouldn't necessarily use the pocket, so I could just go longer, longer, longer yeah, and not have any around. pockets. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. So this is sort of, this is half a ball of yarn, as you can see, and this is the kind of length you get after half a ball. Oh, okay. So... I just did this sample to show you because there's an edging to do. Right. So you do it, yeah, keep going till it's the length you want it to be. So, so I'm going to ask another question, sorry, because it's for beginners. <laughs> so you're doing, when you do the miss a few and do one, that's what's creating the lace effect, exactly. like the hole. Exactly, But yeah. you're not losing any stitch, you're not no, like dropping exactly. stitches, are you? Just, that stays where it is. You go along, you do the next crochet stitch there, then you go along and do that. So you're not, it's not like knitting where you'd be dropping. No, there's no dropping in this no. one because you're working along making your three trebles into the middle of each group. Yes. There's no, you have the same number of stitches every row. Every time, but it's just yes. the way they're organised. Yeah. They look like a little pattern. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so when you get to the end of the very last row, so look, this is what I mean about earlier, that a few have dropped out. Yeah. So let's put my last three in. Um, so are we now pretending we've done the whole length of the scarf? We're pretending we've done the whole okay. scarf. Yeah. Three. At the end of every row, you need to just put one in the third of the three chain, which is that bit I showed you yeah. that I'd marked with a stitch marker. So if you mark that with a stitch marker, it'd be really helpful for you to find uh -huh. it. So just the one treble in there. Whoops. Okay, so that's the very last part of the scarf worked. You're ready to make your edge. Right. So to make the edge, I just wanted to show you, what you'll do is you're going to turn around and work down the long side of the scarf first. And you're going to do one long side, then the other long side, and then one short side, and then the other short side Why? in the same way. So that you get the, I wanted to have the length across here identical each time rather than working around and around. So. Oh, oh, okay. okay. I just wondered <laughs> so if there was a reason why yeah, you did there two was, sides. Yeah, there was a bit of a logic yeah. to it. But okay. Also, you could do this in a different colour if you wanted to. Oh, that you? would be lovely. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah. Okay, so well, the thing that I wanted to just show you yeah. is when you come to work down the long side of the scarf, you've got these posts at the end. It looks different, so it's not stitches that you've got. It's the post of the stitch. Right. So whereas we have been working into the top of the stitches, uh -huh. you've now got the post. It's like a long bit here. Well, it's easier then. Yeah, it is easier. So you do a chain two in the air, yeah. and I'm going to use linen stitch or moss stitch. It's the two names for the same stitch. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so you might know it as either of them. Yeah. And what you do for that is you're going to do a double crochet, but it's going into this gap here, so around Into this the post. post. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So just on, in the hole underneath it. So if you've done um, granny squares, it's a bit like when you work into the space of the chain space. So just put your hook through there, you're going to make one double crochet in there. Right. And then chain one in the air, 
move down to the end of the next row into that space and make one double crochet in there. Yeah. And again, chain one. And you continue all the way down your scarf doing this. I think it's brilliant because if you do knitting, you just go in one direction, don't you? Whereas you've now made Turned your scarf, but now around. you're going down the side exactly. of it. Exactly. You know? So you go all the way along to the end, doing the same stitch, chain one in the air, skip into the next row, and you can see already that's putting a little edging on it. Yeah. Imagine you've got to the end of the row. Yeah. You then do a chain two and you turn it. So this is like the bottom of the scarf. Yeah. You skip over the double crochet, and in that chain one gap here, you put another double crochet. So again, going into the gap. So right. So done chain two, double crochet in there, chain one that takes me across the top of this double crochet, yeah. double crochet in the gap. Chain so one in the, the air. So the chain in the air are creating the frame. Yes. Because you're not, yes. they're not being stitched into anything. They're the bit that are going to be going like that along. Exactly. It just, it just creates a really nice texture, this stitch. So yes. you could just double crochet all the way so along. So is this it, li what you call linen moss stitch? Yeah, linen stitch or moss stitch. Yeah. They're called different things. Okay. But So you do that all the way around. I've done three rows of that. So yeah. you've got all the instructions in your pattern. So everything, there's photographs and everything to show you. So I did it all the way down the one length of the shawl. Yeah. And then I fastened off and rejoined it and did it all the way down the other length. Right. And then I did when it When you say bottom. fastened off, knotted. Just cut it, yeah. Well, when I fasten off... Sorry, I'm just asking <laughs> no, it's only, only it's, if it is Everyone will person. be thinking this, won't yeah, they? Yeah. So when I fasten off, literally all I do is I pull up the loop to about right. so high, about 12 centimetres, snip it at the top there. And the reason I do that is you know that is going to be the length of yarn to sew in at the end when you've finished. And then pull the ball end out like that. That's all you need to oh, do. That's it. No knots, nothing. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. you fasten it off like that, Sorry. and then you turn your scarf around and you go all the way down the other long edge. And, and that's it. The, and then you do the two short edges, and the only thing I haven't showed you is the pockets. Yes. But is that not just a mini version? It's exactly that, a mini version. That's exactly what it is. So let's show you on here. Yeah. So you make your little mini version. Yeah. And then you sew it onto the side of your scarf oh, the way you want to. Now, sew it with a needle or sew it with a crochet hook? Sew it with a needle. Yeah, so leave yourself, when you fasten off, leave yourself a really long end. Yeah. Put that onto your needle, so you've got some needles there, haven't yeah. you? I think I've got one somewhere under here. And then just literally sew it. I used back stitch for people that sew, but any okay. stitch but will you do. Use, you use the yarn, you don't use thread. Use do the you? yarn, yeah. put the yarn on your needle, mm. yeah, exactly. And sew it, obviously, just along the three edges. Yeah. And, and how did you finish the, what was the top edge of the pocket? Sorry, the top edge is that linen stitch again, oh, so okay. that shows you the effect, but I've done five rows this so time. So it's slightly wider. Yeah, exactly. Isn't it, I thought, for some reason in my head, I thought when you did crochet that you'd somehow magically <laughs> have the scuff then do a pocket at the same you time. You can do that, but this is just by far is, easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you that's can do it that way, that's it. Scarves. Yeah, yeah next, exactly. Next Christmas, yeah. <laughs> okay, right, so that's the scarf done then. That's the scarf. That's the scarf done. Right, stop there. Let me do a recap then okay. of everything that we've got here before we move on to the hats. Right, okay. Right, remember your... Uh, if you spend over £40, you get £10 off by using the Save John code. Right. Right, Misty Blue is here. And I'm, am I uh, recapping the scarves or going on to that? Yeah, there you go. Right, so £34.99 is your scarf. Right, that's all in there. Five balls, uh, the instructions and the little leather label. £34.99. Then we also have the blue hat to match which is one ball and your label and your instructions, 12 99 So if you buy that and you buy that, it comes to 47 98 Use the code, you'll pay 37 98 for it. Okay, that's the blue one. That's the most popular one. The blue one is the most popular one. Harvest is the next one, which is yours, isn't it, the one you're wearing. So this is the Harvest scarf, beautifully modelled by Sam. Okay, that one goes there. Oh, it goes that way up, actually. And then, so that's thirty-four ninety-nine, and there it is hanging in Sam's library, or one shelf in the end of the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't been there. I haven't been there. Right then, this is the hat that matches in the harvest. You get one ball in here, plus your instructions, plus your little leather label, twelve ninety-nine, and that's that hat. And we're going to do a demo on the hat now, don't worry, but I'm just getting all of this out of the way so we can... Uh, next, Bordeaux, 
which is this one, which is, makes you this one here. I'll just show you the scarf, actually. You get the five balls plus the leather label plus the instructions. I can't tell you how lovely it feels. And it, was, it wasn't, I imagine, they, when I saw them in the basket, I thought, oh, they're going to be itchy, but they're not itchy yes. at all, are they? Beautiful. Uh, and then the hat to go with. <laughs> Bordeaux, that's this one. There you go. Bordeaux hat, and that's this one. And that's how you'll look if, <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> like that. Go down the shops. <laughs> Apparently I look like <laughs> Phil Mitchell in EastEnders. I am waiting for a bus at half past seven in the morning. Do we, we, oh, no, we don't have a bus in our village. We only have four buses a week in my village. Right. Then this one's Parchment. Did you name it Parchment or did no, they name it? it? Okay. <laughs> parchment. Uh, and we can see that one. Uh, oh, we've got my, my Paul Love a picture of it. There it is, there it is. Parchment scarf, 34 no, 10. Lots of those in baskets, lots of those in baskets. Oh, fewer than 20 available. And then this is parchment hat. It's not a parchment in a pear tree, Paul. Christmas is over now. Parchment hat, 12.99. Right, let's get on. I don't want to take any of the crocheting time up. Let's get on with crocheting the hat and I'll come back to whatever I've got left on the table in a minute right okay so I've got all the hats here just to show you the colours apart from the red one which is over there Bordeaux please Bordeaux <laughs> Bordeaux <laughs> I'll put the yellow one on to show this harvest this is oh, oh it looks better on you <laughs> so you got the I match. need more hair don't I <laughs> yeah Right. So, as you say, it's just really soft. You've got the 90% acrylic and 10% alpaca. So, is it washable? Yes, um, on a 30 degree wash. Right. Also, with the alpaca, if you're allergic to wool, you can wear alpaca. So, quite a lot of people will say, I don't like working with wool because I've got a wool allergy. Yes. But um, alpaca is hypoallergenic. So, you oh, can, wow. people that have a wool allergy. Yeah, because there's some people who are allergic to dog hair, aren't there? But there are certain little dogs you can get. Exactly. That, yeah. So, oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, about. I was looking it up before just to double check. Oh, I was yeah. giving you the right information. But yeah, it's definitely hypoallergenic. So, and it makes it so soft. It's yes. so lovely to work yeah. with. So for the hat, you start at the top of the hat. So you're starting with this bit here. With oh, the, the crown. crown. Exactly. And you start with a magic ring. So earlier when I said there's two ways of starting, you've got yeah. your foundation chain, and then this is the magic ring. This is the other way of starting. Right. So again... We're not doing parchment, Hannah. We're doing misty blue. Thank you. <laughs> Hannah said it was parchment. <laughs> so you put the tail in the palm of your hand, like we did our slip knot. So okay, we haven't, we haven't started. It's just the, thread, it's just, just the yarn. There's no beginner... Chain no, no, no chain with yep, this. Yep. This is starting with a magic ring. Yep. So you start it light with a slip knot, but you don't finish the slip knot. I'll oh, show okay, you what okay. I mean. So you put the tail in the palm of your hand and you bring your loop over to cross it, exactly like we did, whoops, when I showed you my slip knot. Yeah. Put your thumb on the bit where it crosses. Right. Put your hook through from the front, grab this piece of yarn over your hand and put it back through so you've made one loop in the air. Yeah. And then grab the yarn again and put it through that loop to make one chain. And that's your magic ring. Right. So it's like, if you were to pull this tail now, you'd get a slip knot. So it's like a slip oh, knot, but so it's, yeah. not finished. Yeah, and yeah. what you do is you make all of your stitches into this middle of this circle, and then pull the tail tight at the end, and you end up with no hole. Oh, so that's, okay, that's the okay, magic. Okay. <laughs> so once you've done that, we're using trebles again. So this is the same stitch. You've got that granny style look to it with the three trebles. Yeah. So three chains in the air, which is your pretend treble. Yeah. And then you're going to make 11 trebles in that ring. So you're putting yarn over, going into that ring, working around this tangly bit here. But hang on, the ring has got, has the ring got, oh, you, how many stitches did you put into the ring then? I will put 11. At the moment, there's nothing in there. Oh, so that's, this, just, that's just the yarn. See that bit there? That's just the yarn. Oh, I can't, from here, it looks like it's, it's a black yeah. So it's literally, you're putting your trebles into, into the actual that, yarn. Into the big hole there, yeah. around where Sorry, it's, yeah. no, because it's tangled up, so it looks confusing. Yes. But, so you go, but that's what you want. You want that tangly bit yeah. because you work around that. So exactly the same stitch as before. So you're doing your trebles and you've got your chain three in the air and then you do 11 trebles and that chain three pretends to be a treble. Right. So in total, you'll end up with 12 posts, 12 stitches. Yeah. So you need your 12 to start with. 
and I haven't been counting. I was, so. say, I was about to say, how are you keeping, because <laughs> you're chatting away. I have how no idea how 12? many I've made, so let's have a count. So I like to count the posts, so yeah. that changed the way at the beginning counts this one. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so mm. two more. Uh, Gillian Rickard says, hello Sam, lovely to see you again. Oh, that's nice. And Claire hello, says, Gillian. with crochet, what she likes to do is modify patterns to make them so they challenge her. She made a couple of scrubs sprayers, changed them into a nurse, a policeman, a doctor, and most recently a bride and groom. Ooh, that exciting. sounds great. Right. So once you've got your 12, you pull this tail here and it tightens it all up and makes it into a circle. And then you're going to put a slip stitch in the top of this first three chain you made. Okay. So again, you could mark this with a stitch marker at the beginning to help you. But right. it's one, two, three. Such a clear demonstration. Never understood how the stitch counting worked or how to keep flat. Brilliant. From E in Merseyside. Oh, thank you. Okay, so then you're going to put your hook through that third chain in the air. So yeah. one, two, three. For a slip stitch, you just push it through that chain. Yeah. Grab the arm, put it through there and through the loop on your hook. So a slip stitch is literally push it through and pull it back. Yeah, again. it just holds it in place. Yeah. It's a fastening stitch. Oh, okay. Okay, and then you do a chain three in the air again. So that's okay. your first pretend treble. So you've gone from a prawn to a coin now then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm doing my own terminology <laughs> here. And then in that space there where you made your slip stitch, you're putting another treble. Yeah. So that's an increase. So you've got your chain three pretending to yeah. be a oh, treble yeah, yeah, yeah. and then one more. And then you're going to put two trebles in every stitch around. Right. How are we doing for time? So... Fifth. You've got about 13 minutes. Okay, so that's fine. So you put two trebles into everyone around, which gives you 24. Yeah. And you can see that it's continuing on with the circle and keeping it flat. So you're growing your circle, but keeping it flat at the moment. So you're increasing. So you're just making it big. You keep going and you make exactly. it bigger and bigger. Exactly. So you keep bigger. going. It makes this initial circle, which is going to be the crown of your hat, bigger and bigger. Right. So I'm putting and when you say you're keeping it flat, you mean it does it, that automatically or you are physically No, it does it, it automatically. Oh, okay. It'll just sit flat. Yeah. If you're doing it right and you've got your increase right, and when I was learning to crochet a few times it didn't sit flat. Right. And that was because I haven't got the hang of it. But wrong, it's going to curve it up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. So I have put in the instructions, at the end of this second round here, you're looking for it to be about approximately seven centimetres in diameter. Oh, okay. So you can get your little tape measure out and just check when you've got to the end of this round yeah. and you've got your 24 stitches. So first count your stitches, that's the first place you might go wrong. Yeah. And then if they're right, then measure it and check it's around about seven centimetres across. Okay. Terry Ann says, good morning, Sam. Lovely to see your smiling, happy face. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so that's my 24 and you can see it stayed flat. Yeah, no, you can it's measure nice, it now yeah. and get your seven. So if it's not seven centimetres at this stage, if it's wildly different, you might want to start again with a different hook size. Oh, okay. So this is made as a one size fits all kind of hat. Yeah. So um, I've got about, <laughs> I measured the circumference of my head, it's around 55 centimetres. What's which that in is inches? Fairly average, I'm not sure. <laughs> when I looked up, I was surprised to find that's average. Um, and so if you want, if yours comes out, if you've got an Average shaped head. Oh, no, you have got an average size head, 21 and a half. That is a very <laughs> average size head, yeah. So, Mine's bigger, by the way. <laughs> um, but it does stretch because it fitted you mm -hmm. fine. So, um, but the thing to remember is if you want that kind of size of hat, if it turns out a lot less than seven centimetres, start again with a bigger hook. Oh, can you not just go around a few more times to make you it You can do, but I've written the pattern in such a way that you need to follow the, oh, okay. the pattern okay. of the no, stitches. No, no, I'm only asking because I, I would think it's not big enough, one. I'll just keep going. To with other bigger. patterns you can, yeah. yeah. Not yours. Unfortunately, <laughs> not with this particular pattern. Um, uh, but yes, but you can change hook size. Yes. So if it's massively smaller, use a so bigger hook. So the size hook. of hook you're using is a six. Six mil hook. Six, yeah. Six and you can, hook. you can do it with a five, did you, you say? You can do it with well? a, five. yeah, a five. Uh, when I come to do the rim, I'm going to change down to a five. And that's oh, another okay. way you can change the sizing of it. Okay. So when you get to that point where you've got, you're ready to add your rim, you can so use, use a, a smaller really. hook or a bigger yeah. hook to make yeah. it. Yeah, but six for the actual hat. Yeah. Unless you find, as I say, your tension's different. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm on round three. So again, I'm going to do three chains in the air. Yeah. This time, two trebles in this space here. Why? Because I'm setting up the pattern where I've got three trebles, my little groups of three. So with the chain three pretending to be a treble, plus the two, it's like a little group of three, exactly like I used for the scarf. And then you skip one treble, and in the next one, so here's my one I'm skipping, yeah. and in the following one, 
you're putting three trebles. I think it's not the actual making of the stitches that I find difficult. It'd be where you push your hook through. So if you're new to it, when you come to work into your stitch, when you're working a circle... Can we see that close, Paul? Yeah, brilliant, yeah, yeah. When you're working a circle, your Vs are sort of slanted up towards you. Yeah. So no, no, that's fine there, Paul. So you want to work underneath two strands of the V and you have to kind of push your hook. So I'm skipping one and I'll be going to this one. Right, right, Pushing right. my hook upwards. Because yes. this is a flat circle, because this is the starting point from the magic ring. Yeah. Underneath these two strands here. Yeah. That's where you need to go. That's where I think I, if I was on my that own, that's where I'd be bit. getting that confused. That is hard. Yeah. When yeah. I'm teaching people who are like brand new to it from a beginner's point of view, finding where to work the stitches is yes. the challenging yeah. thing. So that's why you can, it's great to have these videos because you can go back and watch really carefully. So putting three in there, three yeah. trebles. Sarah's message saying, Sam taught me to crochet. Amazing teacher and I love her <laughs> so patterns. So lovely. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, and then oh, there's you... nice. Blimey, there are lots of <laughs> love coming in today. <laughs> Just finished Sam's cosy cowl. Oh, we had that last time we were oh, with me, right. didn't we? It's so warm and very easy to do. My first crochet item since I did a blanket in the 1970s. Thank you, Vanessa from Gloucestershire. What were they well like done, the 1970s? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Where are you based then? I'm in Tring in Hertfordshire. Oh, okay. So I did. I've done a lot of. Um, I used to have a studio until lockdown. Of I've course, done a lot yeah. of face-to-face -face classes in my studio, and now I teach them all on Zoom. So. Well, I suppose you can do because yeah, it, it, which is great. It's the, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you're going to continue continue around, skipping a stitch and working three in every other one. Yeah. And you continue on growing the crown of your hat for se several rounds until you have a bigger circle. Oh, well, hang on. I've only got a <laughs> tiny one on mine. So if you imagine, in fact, this one sat like a basket in the moment. If you let it, let it sit the other way around, you'll see actually the crown, the flat part, goes wider than you think. Oh, on the inside it does? Yeah. So on the outside, it looks, it looks like it's the size of a 10 piece. Yeah, so you actually want it to sit flat until, I think I did up to round Yeah, but look six. at the inside. It's there. Anyway, sorry, Kerry. That's fine. So you keep going all the way up to round six with following the pattern of increases. There's lots of photographs showing you how to do it in the pattern. Okay. And then, then you want it to cup up into your hat shape. Right. So then what I'm going to do, I'll take this back. This is one I started. Mm. Sorry, sorry, Jan. It's lovely with crochet, you can do that. Okay, and then you're going to work around just putting three into the th second one of each group. Actually, right. this isn't a very good demonstration because of... So as you come along, you'll get to your group of three, and in this middle one, you put your three trebles, and you repeat that all the way around, and the whole thing, because you're not increasing anymore, the whole thing starts to cup him upwards like oh, a tube. Okay. So it's like it's like if you if you were dressmaking, you've got your flat and then you just add a band exactly on like, like that, that and it makes the exactly. sides. Exactly. So yeah. you're you've gone as wide as you can for the crown to fit your average size head. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then you start to go just around putting your three trebles into the second of every group of three, just like you did with the scar. Okay. Exactly the same pattern, and that just cups it up. With. So I'll show you on this one here. If you've bought both the scarf and the hat, and you're a beginner, which one would you start with? I would start with the scarf, yeah. definitely. Okay. Because you, you can start with that foundation chain and getting into position and practicing that, and it's so repetitive. By the end time you've got to the end of that scarf, you'll have really got the hang of it. So, And it does grow really quickly because it's chunky yarn and with a 6 And you've got a hook. YouTube video on YouTube, I believe. Is yes, right? yes. <laughs> oh, it's ours as well? Yeah, oh, it's ours. and I have got oh, one on my website Lane too. One. Sorry, I thought you, yeah. Thought you meant, yeah. yeah. So, so then when you've gone, I don't know if you can see on the camera there, but when you've gone around and around yeah. putting three into everyone, you get this pattern, you can see it's like a fan yeah. almost. So you do that until row 12, Yeah. and then you need to add a rim. Right. How many minutes have we got, Paul? Four minutes. Perfect. Four minutes. That is perfect. Okay. So this is where I went down to a size five hook. So at this point in the do pattern, you have to? Um, no. What I would do is try it on, so you can see. You see, it's quite nice like that. Yes. Don't, doesn't need the rim. You, yeah. have, you could just keep going like that. So you can see, this is how much yarn I've got left when I'm ready to add the rim. <laughs> Like a little cloche. You know, like <laughs> yeah, cloche exactly. Right. If, if if when you put it on like this, it feels too baggy, go down a hook size or two. Right. If it feels a little bit tight, then stick with your six. It does stretch. It's such stretchy yarn. Yeah. So 
it's, so it's a one size hat. It will fit, yeah. but you can. <laughs> it will fit. It will fit. fit you. <laughs> but you can um, play about at this point with your hook size to make it fit even better. Okay. So what you do now, you've finished doing all of your rounds. You're on round twelve, and then you're going to do a six chain in the air. Yeah. From where you were, so that seems a bit strange, but go with it. And then you're going to put one double crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you skip this one, put a double crochet in that one. Actually in, the, in that chain on the Actually air? Actually in that chain in okay. the air and work back along so you'll end up with five double crochets. Right. So that's three and that's, whoops, four and that's five. Then slip stitch in the next stitch along on your hat. So finding that V straight in, pull the arm back through and through the loop on your hook. Okay. Chain one, and we're going to work back into this one, turn it around because we're going to work back into the double crochets here on this right. one here. Yeah. And you're going to make back loop double crochet. So oh. that means <laughs> you need to go into the back strand of the V. So where before we were working underneath two strands, yeah. you now just go under one loop of it and it's the one that's furthest from you. So you're just going to go under that loop there. So you skip the front one, Put your hook under the back one. Yeah. Pull the arm back through, giving you two loops. Yarn over through the two. Yeah. And you're doing that into every stitch along. So again, you'll end up with five. So just keep a careful count of your stitches at this point because it can be a bit tricky if you lose or gain one. So that was four. So I know I've got one left and it goes in there. So I'm working to the back loop. Yeah. And working to the back loop gives you this ridgy look. Oh, yeah. So then I chain one in the air turn it and repeat that going back down here one double crochet it's not making a rim to the hat it's into the, not yet we've only got two minutes <laughs> okay by the that's way, fine so you know. and got... more than half the stock of this blue hat's gone just so you know okay so all the way back down oh parchment's very popular in the hat it's nice and neutral isn't yeah. it for a hat Okay, and then when you get down, I've done my five now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skip one stitch yeah. on the rim of the hat. Yeah, perfect. And put a slip stitch into the neck. Oh, okay. And that's where you start oh, to make the rim. So the rim, you make it... You kind of join it along as you go. So you don't do one row of rim, second row of rim. You, you make a deep rim and exactly. start going along and like that. Exactly, and that gives you this lovely ribbing effect that you can oh, see on here. Oh, yes. So, right. I think that's, what so I was that's why I've gone up about. and down, up and down, but you must slip stitch every, and you skip a stitch and then you slip stitch. But again, there's photographs, there's lots of help in the pattern. So that's so how no you build up the rim. There's no stitching in this then. It's what you just get to the end and it's finished. Yeah, exactly. So then you fasten off and sew your tail in. There's no assembly. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. And you timed it perfectly because that's you done. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. When are you in next? 13th of January. 13th of January. Yeah. So you see Sam then. Happy New Year to you and, and to yours. You. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Blue hat is this one. The one we were demoing is this one here. Three left. Three left of the blue hat. That's it. They'll go. That's at five to one on Wednesday lunchtime. Blue scarf is this one. What we were demoing to begin with. 34.99 if you're using the, the, the code, then buy both of those and you'll get save you £10. There's the blue one. Okay, next. Bordeaux hat. This one. Which make you this. You get your little label, your instructions, and what the, the scarves have five balls and the um, hat has one ball. And that'll make you that. Models own baggy eyes. Right, then you've got the Bordeaux scarf, which is this one. Right, that's this one. I, c I cannot tell you how soft this is. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I've pulled a stitch. I'll have to leave it there. I can't move <laughs> it now because it's attaching my microphone. Okay, that's, oh, oh no, that's that one. Right, colour next. Harvest. Harvest hat. Okay, that's your harvest hat there. That's what it'll make. 
Harvey Scarf. Now, you see, Harvest was the most popular and got overtaken by the blue. Parchment hat is very, very popular. $12.99. That's the parchment hat. And then we've got the parchment scarf. Now, remember, you can use the voucher once, but you can use it on anything on the Yarn Lane website, the Sewing Street website. It doesn't have to be anything on the telly. It could have been on uh, just on the website. You can go buy wadding. You can go buy hooks. You can go buy whatever you want. As long as it comes to over £40, put Save John as a code, as a code in, and you will get um, uh, your £10 off, right? So Yarn Lane is not next on on Friday with... Claire doing knitting crit nitty critters. Nitty critters, Claire. Right, OK, we're going, we're going. Now I can tell you, I'm, I'm not, uh, Hannah and I aren't back in now till the 5th. I know. So have a happy, 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 happy New Year as best you can do. Stay safe, stick to the rules, and uh, I'll see you on the 5th. Take care.